Hi, greetings from Vanuatu. My name is Alice Kaloran. I am 59 years old and the fourth generation of the black line of a freedom fighter, Tina Mwamata of Lumbogoti village. I was approached by Dr. Chris Ballard in the mid-2020 to recover and publish the untold stories of Samuel Cora Tina Mwamata and be the co-author of the Tina Mwamata and Tina Mwakoto early calls to independent research paper, which is one part of the overall Tongwa history project. We begin consultation and interviews with 20 chiefs around Nefate and Tongoa Island since September 2020 last year. This is a summary of Samuel Cora Tina Mwamata's struggle for independence. He was born in 1859 on Lumbuguti village, but forcefully taken to Queensland during the black bedding era. During his time there, he was approached by two Americans living in the sugarcane plantation who clarified to him the treatment and work condition then as a form of slavery. They gave him a flag and a pistol to symbolize freedom and advise him of how to organize a political drive to educate his own people to free themselves of slave, slavery and colonial rule. On his return home, he started a radical movement with the support of his brother, Tikfakao Tina Mwakoto, Taripo Aliu of Muna, and Kalsakao of Ivira, call, and call it TKT bearing their initial. Using simple allegories to describe freedom and independence, news about TKT spread like wildfire throughout all the other highlands. The native now understood that the missionary wages slavery in disguise. So eager and ready for that freedom, they started rebelling against white man rules. Because cannibalism and the hidden ways of worshiping spirit was still practiced during his time, and the introduction of Christianity, Samuel Cora, was described as possessing power of the spirit. And from God, this alone, with his education, he was very powerful and influential individual. The traders and missionary would later describe him as a bulldog, as he displayed a great bravery and determination with how he rebelled against them. His personality was the main cause of him being ordained with the name Tina Mwamata by the missionary, even though he wasn't the next in line to the supreme chiefly title. Perhaps it was given to him because of his education and leadership combined with his aggressive attitude. Terrified of getting into fight and for peace to prevail, the missionary bestowed him with this great responsibility. He was imprisoned in the former colonial prison at Joint Court area in the confinement room without trial in 1939 and exiled to Eratap Highland to hide him from his thousand followers and spectators coming in nationwide to see him. Possibly those who have heard about his story and Jen in the movement visited him to inform him of the progress of DKT. The colonial power did not agree with, so they moved him out. During his imprisonment, he was described to have encountered and suffered slavery condition yet again, with shackle bound on his arm and feet. He was punished to scrap some daily 179 step leading up to the British High Commissioner residency on Iririki Highland. This caused blisters that later burst into sore. The detail of his last year leading up to his death were horrific and went against all his rights as a human being. He died a criminal but a hero. In exchange of his people's freedom, he was left to rot in jail and, giving, and given minimal and close to no health care and water 
that deteriorated his physique, the sores and ulcers, ulcers along with his old age were the cause of his death on Iririke Island in 1948. According to my grandmother, Le Pako Anasara and Le Kavengiza, who were originally from Ravinga and Panita village on Tonga but married to Ifira, his body has been lying more than two days in the mortuary and when they went in to prepare his body for burial, his half face has already been hidden by rat and pests were found crawling all over his body. And you can imagine the odor of a two days old corpse. The sight was so nauseating and revolting that they promised each other that what they witnessed must be told and shared to expose the hill treating ways of the colonial power over a leader who believed in the power of his people to rule their own land.